Hello, my name is Taylor. I'm a financial coach. I help individuals, couples, and business owners take control of their personal financial lives and their personal budgets. I help them implement their budget inside Monarch Money, as, and I've been using Monarch Money myself for over a year now. So I'm excited to show you this concept of how I've been helping my clients track their IRA contributions, track progress towards their retirement goals, uh, and uh, get clear on their savings rate. So uh, let's dive into it. So first off, when you've connected your accounts in Monarch Money, you're going to notice that there are not transactions being fed uh, into Monarch in regards to these accounts. So there are no contributions, no trades, no uh, uh, no deposits, nothing coming from these normally these investment accounts. That is not always the case, but generally speaking, it, depending on the institution, there are no transactions being fed from this. And so this makes, I'm going to warn you right now that this makes the ending of this video probably not very satisfying for most of you. Most of you are going to want to see these transactions in your budget and your goal, and it's 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 not going to happen. But I'm going to show you the workaround and why, why it's important that it, you do it this way uh, rather than forcing it inside the budget. So First off, what you're noticing is that when you connect into when you have a retirement uh, goal, you're connecting all of your bank accounts uh, to this goal, but there's no transactions. And as long as there's no transactions in here, we cannot connect any of your transactions to the goal. There will not be an option for that. So I have an IRA contribution. If I click on this, I'm going to go and attach it to the goal, but um, there isn't going to be a goal. Uh, there is a goal for savings, I guess, uh, the savings goal, but not the retirement goal. And that's kind of what I want. So what's going to happen is that IRA contribution is not going to in January, uh, not the very bottom here, going to show up in the actual expenses because I cannot connect a transaction that did not come from an account uh, connected to this um, to this goal. So uh, that can be really frustrating for a lot of people. They really want to see that um, actual contribution, but I want to show you why it doesn't really matter and why it's okay that it does not show up here. Um, but first off, it's still really important to budget for it. So you still want to create the goal, still want to attach everything. You can still see your progress towards it. You can put a goal amount. If you've talked to your financial advisor and you know how much you need to retire, you can put that goal amount um, right down here or actually in one of these sections, the target amount here, you can do that. Um, but but if you don't know, if you're just trying to save as much as you can, you can leave this blank and still track your progress by seeing that total balance set aside for retirement. Um, so that's still a good thing to do, as well as you still need to plan for your contributions. If you are making, if you're trying to, you know, contribute to uh, your IRA, your max amount you can contribute in a year is seven thousand dollars or eight thousand if you're over fifty. And so let's say you're trying to do this as on a monthly basis. So we're going to put that five hundred eighty-three dollars into retirement in your budget. You are still trying to budget for it. You're still planning, trying to use your expenses to make sure that there is money being left over for this amount, so that when you have your income minus your expenses there is at least 583 available for goals. Okay. And so that's it. that you'll see that right here in your cash flow section. When you go to cash flow and I go to January, I'm going to see I have $912 in savings because I've categorized correctly my income and expenses. So I see that I have savings and that's my savings rate. So what a lot of people do, um, which this and I'll show you why it's not the best idea is a lot of people is are going to, um, mark this well first of all it's it's a standard standardly marked as a transfer you want to mark this as a transfer when it's marked as a transfer that's why it doesn't show up in your cash flow um, right there so it's still saying we have 912 dollars in savings but a lot of people have been trying to create uh, categories for your IRA contributions um, and that stuff so if we do that let's say we did and so uh, um, we created a category for Roth IRA contributions you'll be able to see that in your budget you'll see the transaction in your budget as you can see let's see right down here we're gonna go all the way down this budget really isn't set up so kind of ignore everything else um, but if you go right down here, you'll see in the financial section, Roth IRA contribution, you'll see that $583 contribution. But look what it does to the cash flow. So you'll see that I don't have enough savings. Um, I don't have a great savings rate, and that's really not satisfying or accurate. And because, and this is what we need to be accurate because your savings rate is the most important feature or the most important thing to be focusing on for success in your personal financial life. It is the savings rate. And so if we don't have an accurate savings rate, um, we're not going to be accurately be tracking our progress on our goals and our progress towards our goals. And so the workaround here is if you go into transactions, um, and as you saw before. 
four, I actually just did this right before. Um, if we go into categories, you can actually select a transfer category. It needs to be transfer, or you can create a transfer category that is an IRA contribution. And how you can do that is, again, it's still not gonna show up in the budget, just to let you know, just to warn you, it's not gonna show up in your budget still. But it's still a way to track how much you're putting towards your IRA very easily. So I'm going to create that category inside the transfer section. This means that it will not show up in your cash flow or your budget. So I'm going to create the category, type an IRA contribution. I just did that right here. So now I'm going to go back to your budget. Now there's still nothing there. There's still nothing connected. There's still, this isn't like, again, I told you, I warned you, this is not going to be a very satisfying ending to this, this question, but it's still not going to show up in transactions. That is okay. Is okay because when you at the end of the year when you go into your cash flow and you want to see um, you know what you actually well first of all actually you'll have to go into your transactions here if you want to see what you actually put towards that amount that uh, that uh, goal you can go into IRA contributions and see that right here and you can just kind of see all of the IRA contributions you've made. So some key points is that one, in order to make this budget work and make this like accurate, you need to reconcile your budget at the end of the month. I have a video on that, on what you need to do at the end of the month to make sure your budget is as accurate as possible. The other thing you need to be aware of is that the most accurate data for what, how much you can put in your contra and extra contributions either towards the goals or credit cards or whatever is your cash flow report. At the end of the month, this is completely accurate of a uh, function of your income minus your expenses equals your savings. And sometimes the savings goes to credit card debt. Sometimes it goes towards uh, retirement accounts, whatever it is. But you generally, if you use more than that, then that means that your, your, uh, your checking account might be decreasing. Uh, it's just so that's just something you want to be aware of is that you you know, this is the, the actual number that you can put towards your goals I have a 912 left so I can put that in and make sure that that is in my budget and actually being transferred um, So yes, it's irritating yes It's frustrating but that's the workaround because I'd rather you see at the end of the year an accurate depiction of your uh, savings rate in monarch um, rather that, but that's up to you. If you're like, ah, oh, I really don't care about this. I just want to show it in the budget. I want to see the transaction. I want my cash flow report to show how much went into IRA contributions. Then you can create a transaction. Um, then you can create a category for in your expense section as IRA contributions. But again, it will show up as an expense, which wouldn't be totally accurate. So then that way, when you're looking at your yearly expenses, you're going to see um, that savings rate be significantly significantly reduced and that might not also be very satisfying especially year over year as you're trying to uh, if you're trying to increase income reduce expenses so that you can maximize your savings this might look very um, unhappy because year over year your expenses will always meet your income right because if you're saving everything and you're marking it as an expense then that's that's the that's that's downside so um, again, not a very satisfying answer, but that is the workaround for right now until Monarch can start to pull in transactions from the uh, retirement accounts so that we can connect, connect stuff to the goals um, or something else that they might do in a creative way to allow us to track these contributions a little bit better. But that is all for now. Uh, so please let me know what questions you have. How are you using the uh, uh, retirement savings. What are you? What did you decide to do? And tell me why. And uh, I'd love to connect and let's chat. And if there's anything that was confusing about this video, like please let me know. Leave questions so that I can continue to make better and better videos so I can be a little bit more specific to what your needs are. So let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please comment. Please like. I love to hear from you. So thank you so much.